I want to show you how to do that faux reverb trick with HD1. We'll need a dry oscillator, as I'll call it, and we'll also need a detuned oscillator. So let's go to basic and vector and turn it on a double program for oscillator one. Let me pull up all the waveforms and type in saw. Uh, we could just go with a uh, regular saw. How about 710 is fine. For oscillator two, I want to use a detuned saw, which is number 429. You can just type it in on your keypad. Now, every time that I've done this before in other videos, I have been using sawtooth waves. You don't necessarily have to use sawtooth waves. You could use like some other stacked waveforms. Like it looks like there's, I don't know, detuned quiet or detuned pulse width modulation. So you could choose other things besides this, but I already know what this sounds like. So I'm just going to stick with the uh, tried and true. So here is oscillator one by itself, just a plain saw. Here's oscillator two by itself, the detuned sound. I want this detuned oscillator. I'm going to call it the reverb oscillator. I want it to sound at note off. So when I hit a note, we don't hear anything until I release the note. So what it's doing on key off is it's running through the time parameters of the amp envelope. And so if I were to give it attack, you would hear the attack at note off. I'm pressing it in here. I'm going to release the key. So you could hear that swell of the attack. If I were to increase the decay, we also hear that. Um, and it, so it counts as a note on when I release the key, and then it counts as a note off after it runs through these time parameters and reaches the sustain, in which case it then goes into the release phase. So if I turn up the release, hit a note, and then let it go, it's going to go through the time of these parameters, and then it will go through the release phase when we get to sustain. So you could hear it, you know, go down to the release phase. So it's not infinitely sustaining, it's just, it's just triggering the note on and note off differently now. So I want to take down sustain. I also want to take down attack. I'm going to end up using this as a kind of like reverb pre-delay. And let's take down decay, which is our new attack parameter. And I want to increase slope by quite a bit. Let's hear what that sounds like. So you can already kind of tell where this is going. Uh, let me turn on oscillator one again, and it sounds like this. So that's a little bit too bright. I want to go into the filter for the reverb oscillator, and let's put it in serial mode. I'll go with a, a high pass for the first one, and, a, and we'll stick with the, the low pass for the second oscillator. Um, let's bring down those highs first. So it sounds a bit more like reverb. I want to kill some of the lows. If we want to hear that by itself, now back with oscillator one. So it sounds pretty reverby. Uh, let's add some velocity intensity. So we'll go up to 40. I think sounds nice. And that sounds like this. So we would actually be able to hear some uh, velocity going on if we engage Karma. And you hear that Karma has that panning going on. I'm going to take that off and then I'll reintroduce that panning uh, just for the dry oscillator, oscillator one. Uh, note number is already patched in by default, so I'll just turn that all the way up. So we'll hear the same kind of panning now. But oscillator 2, the reverb oscillator, we have independent control of. And I want to take the panning all the way down, and it'll engage random panning. On the Kronos itself, uh, if you're using the stylus, you can drag it down, but then you might need to use the decrement button, or I think you could probably just use the value slider to get to the random panning. So that sounds like this. And the sound is pretty plain, so let's go back to basic vector and put on unison and turn up that detuning. We'll add a little bit of spread.
Sounds pretty nice. So something that's pretty nifty about this is if we want to kind of compress the reverb, we could actually just turn down the velocity intensity on just the reverb oscillator by itself. So you can hear how that kind of turns up the reverb. Let's put drive on for both of these. Let's go up to 17. That'll also kind of compress both signals. It'll make it louder. And I am going to actually drop the reverb back down just because I think it sounds more natural when they both have the same velocity response. Nice. Sounds pretty good. Cool. Uh, other things that we could do is we can turn up the decay of the reverb oscillator. Sorry, not the decay. The slope is acting like our new decay. We could turn that up super high and then we'll get kind of like an almost like a we'll get a really, really long reverb tail at that point. So let's hear what that sounds like. I'm just going to turn Karma off for a second. So with this, we can patch, um, let's go to the oscillator pitch and then oscillator two, and we'll bring down JS minus X to like minus two octaves. And then over in the amp, let's use JS X to change amplitude. So that sounds, um, that sounds like this. We can almost create like a turntable stop effect with that. Um. And something else that I like is instead of using JSX, we could use the ribbon. And we'll also go to pitch and we'll make the ribbon uh, its full mod intensity of of an octave it's an octave up and down so let's let's hear what that sounds like and why i like this is because you could touch the ribbon on the right side of center and it'll almost sound like like a radio that's kind of like skipping And that's it for this sound. I thought it was a pretty cool sound, so I figured I would show it off. And yeah. That's kind of cool. It sounds almost like a like a little slap back with that with that short time. Thanks for watching. Take care.